Prime Time Local News, serving the Lakeland and Midwest regions. The Boulder City Stingray Swimmers team is back with their annual water show. With some obstacles through the pandemic, the swimmers have now been preparing and practicing for this upcoming event. Our Shelby Clark spoke with one of their coaches for more details on what residents can expect to see during this year's water show. Joining us today for primetime local news is Adrena Wills with the Border City Stingrays. Thank you so much for taking the time to speak with us today, Adrena. Thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate your time as well. Of course, no problem. Really excited to be able to talk about this. I think this is some nice news that's coming up here because the 2023 water show for the Border City Stingrays is going to be coming up this weekend. So the Stingrays are a synchronized swimmers team. Now, starting off, just for people that may not be aware here in the Border City, how long has the Stingrays had a team like this in Lloydminster? So we have actually had um, this club for over 30 years. Um, personally, I was a previous swimmer. Uh, I competed competitively and we now currently have about probably about 25 to 30 of our members who are on the competitive stream. We also offer recreational programming and we also have a co limited competitive stream, which means you just go to one competition a year. Okay, perfect. That's really cool to see. Now for this water show that's going to be coming up here, what annual year has it been now for the water show? What would you say this year is? I have been back coaching with the Stingrays for the last seven years, and we have done one for sure every year for the last seven years. Bearing, we had to pause for two years there with the COVID-19 pandemic. However, we are really excited to have the community being able to gather again and come and watch our live performance and not just a recording. No, oh, that's really perfect to hear. I think a lot of people are going to be excited to, you know, hear and see back from the synchronized swimmers team here for this year. So what would you say that, you know, the team has been working on, you know, in the meantime, I know some people are even saying, you know, they haven't heard from the Border City Stingrays in so long and just want to see what they've been working on lately. So this year we have three competitive teams. We have a youth team who actually competed at the Saskatchewan Winter Games. We have three duets that also competed in Saskatchewan Winter Games in Regina. And we also have two soloists. So all those routines are going to be performing on Sunday. Um, we have a variety of age categories starting as young as 10 and under and going all the way up to even 20. These girls have been working on their routines, which is essentially our fancy word of calling a dance <laughs> in the water and they have been developing and conditioning to be show us the best performance that they can and it's really from a coaching perspective it is really amazing watching all of these swimmers come together at the end of the year and how far they came our swimmers when they perform, they do not wear goggles. They do not wear swim caps. So they're opening their eyes under the water. They are checking where their teammates are. They have to be aware of where they are in the pool so they don't hit a wall or anything like that. There is a lot of work that goes into these. And as coaches, we are always so proud of the end result every year. I think it sounds like it's going to be a great water show for everyone to come and check out. Now, for previous years, how would you say that support has been from residents with, you know, supporting the Border City Stingrays? I would say the support's been, like, typically overwhelming. Our The mezzanine is always overflow, overflowing. Um, I always wish that I had always more space so I can just show, have more people come and watch. And especially... For the ones who have maybe seen the Olympic level of synchronized swimming, which actually is also call, called artistic swimming now, um, they to watch it at a local level and just seeing where our girls are at in relation to that, we do like they do amazing things. And every year, even as a coach, I'm like, how can I make this routine even a little bit more for them? So it's always challenging and our summers always rise to the challenge and it's amazing. 
Now, for people out there that want to find out some more information and whatnot on the water show, can you kind of expand on what time it will be? And I know you're saying Sunday and where it will be just for people that want to find some more information and come check out the Border City Stingrays and help show some support. So our water show is this coming Sunday, March 26th. The show will start at five o'clock and conclude at 6 p.m. And for anyone who is maybe wondering more information about that, this is going to be done at the Bioclean Aquatic Center. We also will have members of our executive team there and myself and other coaches. So if you come on down and you're absolutely amazed, then you have a summer who loves gymnastics and dance and cheer and all of those types of sports. Artistic swimming is everything rolled into one. And if you want more information on that, you can always reach out to myself personally, or you can email us at bcssynchro at gmail.com. We also have a Facebook group with the Border City Stingrays and an Instagram page as well. So there's multiple means of reaching out to us and finding out how you can get your kid involved in this amazing sport, or even just if you want to drop us a message and say, hey, that was amazing. We always love to pass that on to our swimmers as well. Oh, no, that is awesome. I think it sounds like it's going to be a beautiful water show. I think many people are going to be excited, especially knowing how hard the team has been working and being able to show off their talents and their skills. So once again, thank you so much for joining us today. and. Good luck to you for the water show. Thank you so much. I really appreciate your time. And I hope that everyone who comes and watches is amazed and just in as much awe as we as coaches are. And now it's time for us to check in with Shelby Clark for a look at our evening weather forecast. Thank you so much there, Mr. Jace Mackey. Yes, now taking a first look at your weather forecast. Also, that squirrel story was absolutely adorable. Was absolutely cute. adorable. Very cute. Love to oh, see it. <laughs> yeah, Jay says it's a little bit terrifying. Nose, <laughs> pretty big, and they got some claws on them, but I think that is adorable. Good to see some good friendships out there. Uh, now checking into our weather forecast. We are just sitting at minus 7, so of course that single digits, very nice to see. A lot more sun peeking behind those clouds. I think everyone's really happy to see these sunny skies, you know, throughout the week. Although today we have been seeing some strong winds out there. Definitely has brought it down. Just feeling around with that wind chill around minus 17. So it's feeling a lot cooler today for sure. So please make sure you are layering up wearing a nicer thicker jacket for today because we aren't seeing as uh, warm as we have been seeing throughout the week with that wind chill but of course we are still seeing some sunny skies so I think everyone's still quite happy. Switching over to our school day forecast for tomorrow we will probably be seeing our nicest day. We're going to be uh, starting off for the school day for the kiddos out there at my, uh, minus 10 so seeing those double digits throughout the day it will be drastically warming up to that minus 3 by the time it's lunchtime, and by the time the school day is out hitting that 1 degree mark so just hitting that plus temperature and expecting some sunny conditions so kiddos are going to be experiencing a beautiful day once they're out of class. Switching over to our temperatures across the region for Alberta and Saskatchewan. On the Alberta side, most spots seeing those single digits with those minus marks. Uh, looking around, minus 3, minus 4 degrees seems to be the most common. Uh, minus 6 down here for Marwayne and down here in Provost. Looking at minus 5 there in St. Paul. Uh, minus 2 up in Cold Lake. And then we have some spots that are definitely looking a lot warmer with that zero mark there in Lac La Biche and over in Edmonton, 8 degrees. So Edmonton is back up on its temperatures, beating us all out with that plus temperature. Going over to our Saskatchewan side, they are matching with us with those conditions. Most spots seeing between minus 2 to minus 5 degrees seems to be the common trend. Uh, as we go a bit lower, they are looking slightly cooler with that minus 7 there in Macklin, matching with us more here in the border city. And minus 6 over in North Battleford, so kind of in the middle there from North Battleford. Uh, for tonight, they will be going down to low of minus 14. So we are going to be hitting those double digits for our evening low temperatures in our surrounding areas. But, you know, it's not as cool as what we saw last night. And North Battleford won't be expecting a high chance of some flurries, so it will be quite calm tonight. Then for their Thursday, North Balfour is expecting a daytime high of minus one. So seeing another beautiful day, uh, that single digit, even though it is in the minuses, it's only at minus one and seeing a lot more sunshine. So that will help uh, warm things up there. 
Cold Lake will be going down to low of minus 11, so hitting those double digits just past that minus 10 mark. So not a bad night tonight for Cold Lake and also don't have a high chance of those flurries or showers or whatsoever. And then look at that, their Thursday beating us out. It's definitely with that temperature at 6 degrees. So hitting that plus temperature and seeing plenty of sunshine. So a beautiful Thursday expected for uh, Cold Lake indeed. And for us here in the Border City, we will be going down to that low of minus 12. So seeing those double digits hitting for us tonight, we won't be seeing uh, too much crazy flurries as we were kind of looking at yesterday. We were seeing that light snowfall, but we won't be seeing that tonight. And then for a daytime high tomorrow, Thursday, plus three. So we will be looking at that three degree uh, for a temperature and seeing a lot more sunshine. So be prepared for a beautiful day tomorrow. Now, ending off looking at a, your three-day forecast here, we will be seeing that three tomorrow. Then Friday and Saturday as we head into the weekend, be prepared for some more beautiful temperatures at minus two and a mixture of some sun and cloud. That's all I have for now for a first look at your weather forecast. Coming up next, more on the added cost to access health care for those living in rural parts of Saskatchewan. Lloydminster Bobcats season finished up this past weekend. To cap off their year, they held their annual awards night last night. Our Thomas Wildman has more. The Lloydminster Bobcats, after a solid season, rewarded their players, fans, and community with an open awards banquet. Various different awards were given out, including Boundary Ford with two scholarships, one which was brand new this year. This recognition um, goes to Javen Leslie this year, who was the driving force behind uh, the Buzz the Bobcats. It raised over $32,000 that goes directly to the Lloyd Regional Health Foundation. And that has nothing to do with the Lloydminster Bobcats. That's directly to the Lloyd Regional Health Foundation for Mental Health and Youth. And the same one, uh, you know, coming up from Boundary Ford Gives with uh, the given goals that'll go to the Lloyd Youth Centre, which I think is over $10,000 now too as well. Um, so again, just our players working towards the better of the community. The various awards given out to the players were voted on by the players and the voted most valuable player Brock Kulicki was thankful to his teammates for the honor. I really uh, really enjoyed my time here uh, playing with these guys. They, they really made me feel like I was at home and uh, I had a lot of fun here. Uh, we went through a couple ups and downs this, this year but uh, you know it was good to come down in the end there and uh, I thought we, we got the short end of the stick during the playoffs there, but uh, it was a good battle nonetheless, and uh, you know I was really proud of these guys. The Bobcats also gave out awards to some of their volunteers and staff and said numerous times throughout the night how thankful they are to the community for their continued support. Yeah, you know, community, community support is always huge, uh, especially when you're trying to run an organization like this, and um, they, they really got behind us this year, especially in that uh, last game when everyone showed up there, there were like 1,600 people or whatever there, so uh, it was really awesome for us, and uh, it was a great experience also. The Bobcats will be saying goodbye to a few players, but new recruits will come in, and they will, of course, be back ready to compete next season. Thomas Wildman, Primetime, Local News. And now it's time for us to check in once again with Shelby Clark. Thanks again so much there, Mr. Jason Mackey. Yes, now taking another extended look at your weather forecast. We will be starting off with our central zone of the provinces. And what a switch up we are looking, especially on our Alberta side. Uh, we were looking at some minus temperatures, you know, throughout the week as we were looking at our central area. Now we are back up and even seeing those double digits for our plus temperatures. Uh, 11 degrees for Edson and Jasper, well as 10 for Whitecourt and Edmonton. So definitely looking a lot warmer in these areas. Uh, 8 degrees in Rocky Mountain House, while Red Deer and Athabasca seem to be slightly cooler compared to the rest. And of course, Cold Lake is looking slightly cooler. They're a bit closer to the Saskatchewan side, so at that minus point indeed for uh, minus two for Cold Lake. We go over to our Saskatchewan side and they are continuing that cool streak as they are still in those minus areas. Uh, minus six to North Balfour, still matching with us here in the border city. Minus seven in Saskatoon while Meadow Lake is matching with Cold Lake and then we have those minus nines over there with Prince Albert and Melford. Now as we go over to our northern zone, they actually are surprisingly looking slightly warmer on our Saskatchewan side compared to our uh, central zone. Minus eight seems to be the coolest condition on this side. Uh, we got some minus, we got a minus five there in Flon Flon, while there's minus fours up in uh, Stony Rapids and Uranium City, and then Lalosh and Buffalo Narrows, both at minus three. 
I'm going back over to Alberta side here. They have warmed up quite a bit, kind of matching with us more in our central area, kind of following suit. Uh, with most spots seeing those plus temperatures now, uh, Fort Chapon seems to be the coolest, just at minus two. Most are just sitting at that three degree mark. It's two there in Fort McMurray and over in Grand Prairie. Of course, still seeing the warmest condition yet compared to the rest with that seven degree mark. Now going over to our southern zone, they have warmed up, especially for Lethbridge and Banff, now just at 9 degrees. Seeing that 7 there in Calgary, while Medicine Hat is still slightly uh, seeing some cooler conditions, just at that one mark. And of course, up in Coronation, still continuing that cool streak with minus 6, and they continue to see some slightly cooler conditions compared with these other spots on our Alberta side. And as we go back over to our Saskatchewan side, they are definitely matching with us in our central zone as they have uh, cooled down quite a bit. They have been seeing those minus points throughout the week as well, and that seems to be the same pattern for today. Uh, minus 7 in most spots on this side, while this minus 9 seems to be the coolest in our Regina area. Uh, over in Estevan, just at minus 8, and up in Yorkton there with minus 5 degrees. But now as we look at some overnight temperatures that we will expect tonight as we head into our Thursday, we will be seeing some nicer temperatures for our evening lows indeed. Uh, Isla Cross especially with that low of minus eight so expecting that single digit for Isla Cross tonight the rest will of course be seeing those double digits but you know not too bad just those mid-teens uh, low of minus 12 Bonneville will be seeing tonight Meadow Lake and Provost will be expecting a low of minus 13 and Paradise Hill will be expecting that low of minus 14 so definitely nicer temperatures than what we saw last night and condition wise it will be pretty clear you know it will be cooling down but it will be a clear night and a calm night for all of these spots in our surrounding areas Looking at our Thursday in the Border City for our hourly forecast, we will be starting off slightly cooler with those double digits at uh, minus 11, minus 10 right off in the morning. And as we go through the day in our mid-afternoon, we will be hitting that zero mark around 2 p.m. and even reaching that plus 2, uh, around plus 3 in our uh, 4 p.m. area. So we will be expecting a beautiful day for us here in the Border City tomorrow as we will even be cooling down just to around minus 5 tomorrow evening. But, you know, we can't really complain about that. I think we got some beautiful uh, temperatures expected for tomorrow. And looking a little bit into our extended forecast, as I was saying, we are expecting a beautiful day tomorrow for our Thursday and then a lot more sunnier conditions. We have been seeing lots of sun throughout the week. Expect the sunniest day for tomorrow. Make sure to get out there and enjoy it. We will be looking at uh, minus two for a couple days after that for Friday and Saturday as we head into our weekend. So nice single digits for our minuses uh, into our weekend and a mixture of some sun and cloud. We will slightly cool down Sunday as we head off into uh, ending off the weekend, heading into next week with minus four, but still a very nice uh, temperature and then even starting off next week minus five seems to be the coolest on our Monday and we'll be warming up to minus one and minus two next Tuesday and Wednesday. That's all I have for now. Our Jason Mackey will have our news coming up for you after the break. Stephanie Dobson this week. It's another episode of Healthy Thriving Family After Divorce. Stephanie is a lawyer and mediator here in Lloydminster at Hank and Divorce Law and Mediation. Stephanie, thanks for joining us once again this week. Yeah, thanks for having me as usual, Stacey. Well, we're going to be talking about grandparents this week, and that's not something normally you associate with divorce and separation, but we <laughs> want to talk about grandparents' time with kids whose parents are going through separation and divorce. So Let's start out by talking about how grandparents can continue to maintain a meaningful relationship with their grandchildren whose parents are going through separation and divorce. Yeah, thanks, Stacey. You know, I thought this would be an interesting sort of expansion of our theme of being, you know, around parenting time and scheduling time. And, you know, so often in a in a separation and divorce, the extended family gets a little bit forgotten about. And, you know, because so much of the focus is on the parents and how they're going to move into two homes. When grandparents are looking at their adult child who's going through separation, one of the first things I recommend, of course, you're already supporting your child, your adult child going through the divorce, but just make sure that you um, 
you let your adult child know how important it is to have that meaningful time with your grandchildren. Now, naturally, what usually happens is when, say, your child is the is the uh, son, right? And so um, the dad, in that case, is going to be carving out their own time, or the mom will be carving out their own time. So often what happens is the grandparents will get kind of a chunk from what the parent already gets. But one of the things that you can do is to say, look, I'd like to carve out some of our own time. So let's call it grandparenting time. So it just adds a little bit of an extra layer. Now, one idea for grandparents could be to use what we call the right of first refusal as a way to expand their time. So sometimes what parents will do is they'll put a clause into their parenting agreement that says, in the event that I, dad, am not available during my parenting time, mom gets that first right to talk to care for the children. What you could say is, if dad's not available, can the grandparents have the first opportunity? And then mom or you know the other parent gets the opportunity. So just finding little ways to carve out special time is really important. Now, what about in a situation, Stephanie, where it's maybe not so amicable and the grandparents are cut off uh, from the grandchildren? What can you do in that scenario? Well, of course, the the first thing that we hope is for people to, to, to kind of to talk it out and just to try to come up with some sort of resolution. But if they if um, that isn't possible, grandparents actually may have the right to apply to the court for some court ordered grandchildren time. So the rules, of course, are different depending on whether you're Alberta versus Saskatchewan and Lloydminster. We're always thinking of both provinces. But some sometimes grandparents will be automatically entitled to apply to the court, and sometimes they actually have to ask permission to apply to the court uh, for that grandparenting time. But in the end, it's going to be the best interest of the children that's going to determine what the court's going to do. Now, um, one of the things to keep in mind is that when we're demanding time, so through a court application, it often results in that more strained race relationship. And so, you know, even if you do get court ordered time, you know, we just have to be mindful that sometimes that more strained relationship can create an even more toxic environment for the kids. Stephanie, you deal with mediation all the time. Is that an option for grandparents? You know, mediation, as I describe it, is just a neutral professional mediator who's helping people to resolve stuff. So whether it's two parents resolving their parenting time issues or other divorce separation related issues, or you know, two neighbors having a dispute or grandparents wanting to meet with their grandchildren and, and um, have some time with their grandchildren. Um, absolutely. So is the short answer, right? Um, and going back to the idea of, you know, um, instead of demanding time through a court application, we're requesting it through talking it through. Sometimes you can't do that on your own and you, you need to use that neutral person to help to bring resolution. Now, what if it's the other side of things? What if it's the grandkids who are opposed to seeing their grandparents? Well, I would say, you know, again, going back to mediation, right? Some neutral person who might be able to help people to talk that through. So children can also attend mediation and maybe that we need to find out a little bit more about what's going on with the with the grandchildren as to why that resistance. Maybe the resistance is from the parents. Maybe the you know and and sort of a, as an a, um adjacent to what the parents are thinking. Um or maybe it's coming directly from them. So if we can just somehow use some ways to get those words out and find out what's going on underneath the surface. Um, it can actually help to build the relationship. Now, of course, if the parents are on side and supportive of the grandparents' relationship with the grandchildren, then of course that's going to, you know, go the great distance. And maybe grand, maybe the parents will be involved in the mediation too. So we got lots of people: grandparents, grandchildren, and parents. So, but we got to right. get to the root of the issue. Well, lots of options, uh, Stephanie. Anyways, it's good to know that when it comes to grandparents, they do have some avenues with this. So thank you very much for joining me once again this week. And yeah. we will talk to you again soon. Okay. Thanks, Stacey.
Furniture set and design supplied by Furniture Gallery and Furniture House, downtown Lloydminster. So I'm here with Kaz from the city of Lloydminster talking about their Lloydminster Museum and Archives in-person live model painting event coming up. So Kaz, can you tell us just a little bit more on that? Hello, absolutely. So it is a live figure drawing session. And as the name implies, it is, uh, it is an event where we have a live figure model and the artist get to illustrate it in life. So the artist gets to do different expressive poses and you can bring whichever medium you like. So if you like painting or drawing or even bringing your digital illustration device, you get to illustrate it on different poses. And can you tell us a little bit more about the timing and location of the live in-person drawing session? So it will be in the Lloydminster Museum and Archives and it's running on March 24. It starts at 6 and it runs at 6.30, sorry, it starts at 6.30 and it runs all the way till 8.15. Will there be a required skill level or certain threshold that people would need to actually hit to attend this session? Absolutely not. Every skill level is welcome from complete beginners to very experienced artists can benefit from a live figure drawing session. And is this the first time that you've brought a live model into a session to paint? Or is this something that you guys try to set up yearly? Um, it is the second one we host. We hosted our very first one last month and it was very fun and was very successful. We had lots of artists come here, meet each other, give very valuable critique to each and another and yeah. Yeah, second time and we'll be having more, hopefully. And can you tell us a little bit more about where people will be able to sign up and register for this in-person session? People can register at lloydminster.ca slash register and then they can go on the register programs and then they will find the life figure drawing section or they can also give us a call to the museum and we will be happy to help them. And is there by chance anything else that you'd like to bring up that I just haven't brought up during this conversation? Um, just that life figure drawing is one of the most beneficial type of practices for an artist. It helps people develop their observation skills, their motor skills, and drawing the human body life, it's an opportunity that we don't have every day. So I really encourage everyone to come and try something new. And for the model observation painting, will there be multiple models or just one that students will be able to observe? We will have both a female and a male model tonight, that night, sorry. So it's going to be definitely an event you don't want to miss. Well, thank you so much, Kaz, for speaking with me today about this interesting upcoming event. Have a great day. Wonderful. Thank you, Zach. 